You know, I really appreciate all of the great comments we got about our knot tying video, showing how to tie the Jimmy Houston knot. And you know, I've actually been tying the Jimmy Houston knot on television for probably 35 years now. If you watch that video on YouTube or on Facebook, you saw the story behind it, how we had this machine that we used in store promotions, tying knots, and I tied hundreds of different types of knots, and all of a sudden, one of them did not break, and that became the Jimmy Houston knot. But I've had some requests also, I've had some requests also, let me get me some line out here. I've had some requests also to do, this is our new Jimmy Houston blaze rod and reel, that's the neon green, that uh, this is just a prototype right here. Our life is good today, rods, in, in a bla the new blaze series. That rod and reel will retail for under $100, probably about $89 at Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's, probably Walmart, Dick's, you know, a lot of different places, and it's a, that's just like the best buy in the world for the money. Uh, the rod is an incredible rod. The rod's worth that all on itself. It's like getting a free reel with it's what it's like. But a loop knot is a lot knot you're going to tie where you're not going to cinch down directly to that lure. And one of the places where I use it a lot is in a jig like a football jig or a flipping jig. A lot of times I'll use a loop knot. Now remember, a loop knot is not a pure 100% knot. If we put it on a line testing machine, it'll break at about 80%. So keep that in mind. If you're using, say, let's say line that breaks at, let's just say 20 pound test, it's gonna break at about 16. So just realize that when you tie a loop knot. The reason you tie a loop knot is to give a lot more action to your lure. Now we used to tie this on pretty much any jerk bait and we tied it on a lot of crank baits. Let me, uh, let me uh, it looks like it's got a little, oh, there it is. <laughs> it wasn't the lure's fault, it was Jimmy's fault. He wasn't hitting the hole. On a loop knot, we tie it on baits like jigs to give the jig a little bit more action. Here's what you want to do. Just run it through there one time, and you kind of want to come up here with your hand, and you simply make a loop around three or four fingers of your hand like such. Now you're doing just like you're tying an overhand granny knot. I'm going to take that jig, I'm going to go through that loop once, get all the rubber through it, all the tail through it, go through it, go through it twice, go through it twice. Now I've gone through that knot twice, that's two. I've got this great big loop here, so I want to grab a hold of it right down close to the eye of the bait. I'm going to wet it a little bit to keep it from heating up, and I'm going to cinch it down real slow and easy. I'm going to cinch it down where I can make me a really small loop knot down here at the end. And there's a loop knot right there. Tighten that thing up. Now you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut this tag off right here. I don't have any scissors handy. Let me grab a pair of scissors right here real quick. Yeah, there's the cutters. Don't throw this fishing line in the lake either, guys. And so I'm going to take this and we'll cut it down here real close. Just cut one of them, Jimmy. I'm going to cut it down here really, really close. Okay, which end is the tag? Hup, not that end. Look what I about did. Let's see which end is the tag. That end is the tag. Okay, I'm going to cut it down here really, really close. And here's what we end up with. Now we got a loop knot. Now here's the deal on a loop knot. If we've got that knot cinched down solid, and we're bringing that bait in and, and shaking it and working it, bouncing off the bottom, the action is going to be impeded because that's down against it. You see what's happening right there? Moving around. That's what's happening. We can still make a lot of action on that bait, but now with the loop knot, now look what's happened. Now I'm going to put my finger right above the loop. Now look at that. Look at that. I mean, that's, that's the difference. Amazing amount of difference to tie a loop knot in a jig as opposed to a cinch down knot. Keep in mind, a Jimmy Houston knot, pure 100% knot, a loop knot, about 80%. But the increased action that you put on that bait is going to give you a whole lot more bites. And that's what it's all about, is bites. So, if you've got line that's going to break at 20 pounds with a Jimmy Houston knot, it's going to break at 16 with a loop knot, hey, go to 25 pounds. <laughs> go to 25 pound test. The other place that we use this loop knot is on small crankbaits with that, most crankbaits nowadays come with a, sw a snap on them or a swivel or an O-ring. And this O-ring is out there and you tie to the O-ring and that gives you a lot of action on your, on your jerk bait. But if you've got a small, if you got a small jerk bait or a small crankbait, a lot of times, even that swivel or snap or, or, or O-ring out on the end of it impedes that action some. And it, again, if you had the O-ring on there and you start moving it around, it moves around some, but not near like it does with the loop knot on it. So as you're fishing a jerk bait, and that jerk bait, you're jerking it down and it's moving, if you've got a, a loop knot on there, you're going to get a lot more action out of it than if you do a snap. And here's what a snap does. A snap adds weight to the front of that bait. 
an O-ring, a split ring, adds weight to the top front of that bait. A snap and swivel adds weight to the front of that bait. When you do that, you're going to take away some action. Sometimes, in real critical, hard fishing situations, the difference between putting a loop knot on and putting an O-ring or a split ring or a snap or a snap and swivel can mean the difference in getting bites and not getting bites. Other days, don't make any difference at all. Those days it's difficult, kind of keep in the back of your mind, I wonder what would happen if I just tie a simple loop knot on that lure. Sometimes, sometimes guys and girls, it's the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. Hey, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go in there and hit that sub, sub button today, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, where you'll get a notification every time we're going to do one of these videos. We put up a video almost every day. Some days we put up two or three videos. And so if you're, if you're, if you're on Facebook, if you're on, and not on YouTube, get on there. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what allows us to do these videos is subscribers. We need a lot of them. If you're already a subscriber and if you're fishing with somebody that tie, doesn't tie a very good knot, pick out a couple, two or three of our videos we've done lately. Down teaching him how to tie knots. Send it to eight or ten of your friends. Pick out one or two of the fishing videos that you really like. Share it with eight or ten of your friends. Tell them to subscribe to Jimmy Houston Outdoors now on YouTube. Hey, guys and girls, have a great day. See you later.